Hey, I just want to welcome everybody to a legendary talk. This is Garage Talk, Sea Stories Edition. All of us Navy veterans, active duty, been around the world. I'm here just to share the platform of what we've been through, all the good times, the bad times, and the reminiscing. If you ever go to a bar or see some sales out there talking plain spades, this is what we talk about. Only the real can recognize the real. Active duty, military, and veterans. We all understand what we've been through been around the world and we have a lot of stories to share so i created a platform so we can share that story yo what's up what's up this garage talk c stories i got my main man santi you know what i mean dj santi the overseas guru legend you know what i mean active duty maybe our 15 plus years in the fucking military you know what i mean yeah. so i got him on here man we go we go talk about a little stuff things experiences that maybe he know people who have been in he has been in i don't know but we go we go we go we go talk about some stuff man you know what i mean but it's that sea story talk garage talk you know what i mean santi what's up man give us the background man where you been how many how, how many years you've been in man and what, uh, we're trying to figure out what the things you've seen man it's the military is a great place i always tell i promote it i think everybody need to do at least four years if you ain't do four years, <laughs> hey, look, I'm good with it. I want to go to college too. But look, four years is great. I sent my, my kids to the military. You ain't never going to get that experience anywhere in life. You go, that racism shit goes out the window because guess what? You sleep with people you don't know about. You sleep in the same barracks, right? You say it goes out the window. What? Racism goes out the window? It, 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 it kinda. It doesn't go out the window. It ain't go out the window. But I'm just saying though, like you on Liberty Buddy, your Liberty Buddies, yeah, you going out, to, you going, you going to hang out with people yeah, yeah, that you wouldn't usually hang out with. I would say your Liberty Buddy, yes. But so look, but I ain't yeah. saying supervisor. But look, I'm saying you can hang it out with people you never would imagine hanging out with. I never, I never heard of the Philippines start joining the boot camp. I'm like, what? A Filipino? What's that? <laughs> I never heard of Filipino. I'm like, what are you? Uh, I'm like, what are you? Where did you hear about the Filipinos? I'm not gonna lie, man. Like, there's so much stuff that I wasn't introduced to until after I joined the Navy. Like, I, shit. Close to the mic. I didn't, I didn't even eat hot sauce. I didn't even. I didn't even, <laughs> even I didn't even know what the fuck grits were. <laughs> you you know, didn't know what grits was, I huh? Didn't even, uh, the first time I ever had biscuits and gravy was in boot camp, man. And and uh, man, like it blew my mind. But that was me because I'm open. You know, I'm open to uh different changes, but. For the most part, some people that are just closed off and they, you know, they only feel how they feel. Everybody's experience is going to be different. You know, some yeah. people are like, no, you know, they feel uncomfortable to new things. Uh, you know, not not so much. That's facts. I was ready for facts. I, I know, like I said, I never heard of, I never knew what the Philippines was on the map until I joined the Navy. <laughs> I'm like, yo, they like, I'm like, where you from, homie? He said, Philippines, a Filipino. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> Then if I get in the active duty, everybody's Filipino. And they run the fucking Navy. They run the Navy. Nobody knows I'm like, neither. I have never heard of the Philippines. I have never heard of where that was ge geographically. But I'm happy I know them. Mm. We good. Okay, go see it, brother. I'm I'm good. I'm happy. I'm happy I know they are. You know what I'm saying? I got I got a story. I've been in the Philippines. You been in the Philippines? Never. Man, look, I was in the Philippines. Let me tell you a story. We was in the Philippines, man. I was flying on aircraft. I used to, I used to cook a private jet for G5s. And I talk to your brother. I was, I was, <laughs> my, my, my kids, you know what I'm saying? Single dad of three. So look, <laughs> you know what I mean? Try to do this podcast quarantine style. I got the kids, I got the kids running in, in and out. My bad. So look, I'm in the Philippines. We flying in. And I remember I wasn't as salty as these dudes. It's really three in the morning, our time in Hawaii. But it's like four in the afternoon where we at in the Philippines. And we, no, no, it was like 12 in the afternoon. And we couldn't check in our hotel room. So these other dudes, my, my chief and my first class, I was the same class. My chief and my first class was like, fuck that. I'm going to the bar. At the bar, nigga, I couldn't stay up. I'm hurting. <laughs> they go to the bar and they go get lit. I checked in, I, went, I took a nap, went to sleep. And when I came out my room, hotel room, we get to sleep. I go downstairs, and they walk into the hotel and say, oh, you going out? We go out with you. And they went back out. Mm. Them boys were salty. 
I thought I was salty. Cause I went to sleep. Them boys, we we just I'm talking about I'm talking about I was tired. We just came from working eighteen hour shift flying from Hawaii to the Philippines, flying, you know what I mean? Anyway. Hawaii to the Philippines, that's like eighteen hours on a plane. And them boys hit the bar. Straight to it. And then they hit the bar again. And then when we when we hit the bar, we just they got a red light district in the whole, in the Philippines. Oh man, so y'all did the strip. We did a strip and a strip. It had a boxing ring with midgets fighting in the middle of it. <laughs> my man went, my man went inside the, in, in, my man went inside the ring. Oh, he went in the ring and started fighting with the midgets. It was oh, crazy, God, son. crazy night. You know what I'm saying? I know, and I know about that. Like when you go to another country, man, that was the biggest piece, man. You go somewhere new and uh, you just never seen nothing. Like that before, let, like, yeah. I, 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 I've been to some places me, let, where you're walking down the street, and you know, there's a lot of people in the street, and somebody random is just grabbing you. You know, she grabbing your dick. Some some random chick grabbing uh, your dick, just walking down the street, and I'm just like, at first, you know, at first you're like, yo, what? The, you know, you 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 tripping, and you see the salty motherfuckers. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they see you the new guy on the block. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what's your what's your first experience? What's your first experience? Of um of being overseas, man. Uh, back in the day, what's your sp- what's your craziest first experience? Of like, yo, I'm overseas. It could be something you seen or something you was a part of. I don't know. Shit, man. My first experience overseas. Um, so I was doing uh, I was a translator, um, in the Caribbean for. Uh, what do you mean, you're a translator? Yeah. Cause you told me he was bilingual, huh? So he's like, you try, yeah. I took the test and everything. <laughs> Okay, you get a little extra it. bag. Getting little, you get a little extra bag. It's like peanuts, like eighty dollars. You know what I'm saying? But they they threw this on the table at first because at first I thought I was like, damn man, they, I'm getting I'm getting the only experience. There's only like three of us in here that's Spanish. And they yeah. put us all three of us in there, and uh, they asked one dude he was married, and another dude just had a kid, and we had just we had just got back from a deployment. So they were like, do you want to go to the ship? I was like, fuck. I was like, what ports are we going to? They said Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Barbados, Colombia, Guatemala, Honduras, yeah. Nicaragua, Panama. I was like, yeah, I got my shit ready to go tonight. <laughs> I was like, tonight, you know? So I shit, I just went, um, I went back to my apartment. And at the time I was living with like five other dudes in one apartment. That's the that's another part of it. Where y'all's at? Uh, we was in VA, man. Oh VA, man! VA. So you was on East Coast stuff. You was you was traveling the East Coast. I was on I was on the East Coast, but I was going to the Caribbean. And well, you was a frigate or what? Nah, we was actually on the um, it's this uh, it's a wave piercing ship, so it's called the HSV two Swift, man. I have never heard of that shit. It's a catamaran shape ship, so I have never ever, heard. You that. ever seen a ship that has the, it has like a um, a hole that uh, you ever seen how the new the new ships are? I know it's like what it's like it's it's like it's sitting on this two, it's like, on two. It looks like it's just sitting on two things in the yeah 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 I, I've seen it when I was you in San drive, Diego you could drive underneath the boat I've seen one of those before it's yeah. a small boy really it, it, but it's big it's, it's big but it don't hold that many people right it don't hold that many people right which is great yeah. which that was my first experience number one to the ship life and then number two um, that was my first deployment so I don't know what to expect you know uh, you know here I am I'm, I'm, I think I was like. 19 yeah. and uh so i ain't had no clue i ain't had i don't know what to expect nothing so i got to the ship everybody looking at me crazy uh you know i get into the i i, I i'm looking i'm in the overflow burden um and i'm not i'm not feeling the overflow burden really because uh, overflow born let, let people know what overflow burden mean man. people don't understand what what but it's an overflow burden so overflow burden is going to be the spot where you got like any guests to the ship where they're going to be sleeping at so you got your um you got your ship's crew and they usually have the the legit burden yeah which is like um you know they have uh like the they got their own enclosed area usually overflow burden is going to be m- Closer to a common area, it's no, it's not that much privacy there neither. And then um, that's also where the cats go and they duck off during working hours to go take naps in their uniform in the in the <laughs> in the rack. Uh, I'd be easy. Um, but that's where I was at. And then my very first experience, I grabbed the middle rack. 
And man, I never forget that. Middle rack is cool though. You got I usually love the middle rack. usually got to be in a high rent to get a middle rack. That's what my man, my man was telling me. He was like, "Yo, when you get to the ship, make sure you get you a middle rack, man." And I was just like, "All right, cool." You whatever. need pool to get a middle rack. I, there was not that many people in the overflow. It was just like me at first. Yeah, it was just me, cause it was only a couple. It was it was it was a couple of us. It was like five or six, but there was enough room for everybody to have their own middle rack. So yeah. everything was cool at first. That was just the first stop. Then the next stop, we went and picked up some other cats. And then there was this first class came into the burg and it's like, um, you know, they was picking out their racks, like the same thing. We picked up some more crew. And he was like, yeah, I want that rack right there. And I'm like, nah, bro, that, that rack, take it, man. You got to go down the, You got to go <laughs> well, down the, was E1, E3? What was I was like? a, oh, shit. Man, I think, yeah, I just made third. I just made third. So he E4, fresh, he E4. Fresh. He talking about that's my rack. You know what I'm saying like, no, that's my not, rack. I, but I don't understand the rules. You know the, 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 these unwritten rules because that's what the fuck they are. Yeah. And then here I go. I'm still, I'm still fresh, like fresh from back home, fresh from not. I don't give two fucks who's talking yeah. to me. So I'm like, bro, that's my fucking rack. That's where I'm sleeping at. And then he started laughing like he did a really calm too. And I that's what scared me the most how calm he was. And he was like, nah, man, that's my rack. And then he walked off. And then, like, fucking 10 minutes later, man, fucking couple first classes came over and they were like, they were like, hey, man, you got to get your shit out of the rack, bro. (laughs) First class said you got to get out of that motherfucker. Yo, my first week on the ship, I got devoted out of my fucking rack, bro. And then uh, then, uh, the only thing left at that point was bottom racks. And you don't want the bottom rack because motherfuckers, motherfuckers stepping on your shit. So you stepping got the bottom rack. People don't understand. When you got a bottom rack, you like sleeping on the floor. On the like you on the bottom. You like sleeping or, on the floor. Or I heard like bad cases where cats come back from the ship drunk, and they uh, they think they peeing in the toilet, but they start peeing in the bottom rack of a fucking uh, uh, of somebody's shit. So I was just like, man, I'm about, to, I can't do this shit. So um, I ended up taking some. I take a, a top rack somewhere, which yeah. is. It's cool at first, but it's not cool when you get fucked up and it's time to get up in that motherfucker. Nah. So, yeah, man, that happened, and then you know. I ain't that, never had a bottom rack. I had a top and a middle. That was it. So that's what I <laughs> originally. That's how I started. I had a middle, but then the top was kind of like I used to say that was my condo yeah. up there. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I want to take a vacation, I go up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but nah, fucking uh, this what I ended up doing was uh. I just was pissed about it, and, and you know we had to see, we still had to see each other, and I see that motherfucker in my it, it, what I thought was my rack, and then um maybe like another week later I realized like there was like a whole bunch of r- unwritten rules to fucking being on deployment, bro. You fucking <laughs> you can't just go busting engineering's burden. Nah, I didn't know I didn't know that. You can't do that. I, I you can't you do that. You can't just go bust into Yo. fucking deck departments fucking burden. Mm. Yo, I went in there. I, so they were looking for somebody. I went in there and I just walked up in there, you know, like open the door because it wasn't like the cheese mess or some shit yeah. like that. So I walk up in there and one of this salty ass motherfucking EM one, bro, man. I never. He was cool as fuck. He was cool with me the whole time until I did that. And he was like, he poked his head out of the rack. He said, "Hey, man, what the fuck is you doing?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I'm o- I'm over here looking for such and such." Like, man, get the fuck out of here and fucking knock on the door he and you. stand at the fucking door until somebody answers he, the door. He, he punks you. So now, yeah, so now, again, now we getting back to the same piece. I'm like, so now this is round two. So now I'm like, nah, this motherfucker going, ain't nobody going to be fucking talking. I'm not going to be the ship bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now yeah. I'm thinking like it's one of those things like, oh, nah, this is a new guy on the ship. So I started to get rowdy with him, man. I started to get like real rowdy at the door. And then now the other engineers that were in there sleeping, they started waking up. And it was almost like I had woke up the fucking uh, a hornet's nest. And now all the little fucking young engineers, they heard the salty EM1 arguing. So then they were like, nah, you ain't talking to my, my man's like that, blah, blah, blah. And then now they jump out. Yeah. So now I'm starting to see the movement. I'm like, oh, now I'm about to get jumped over here in front of fucking engineer in the fucking P-Way. You, you a fucking MA. You a cop. Well, you at, the time, at the time, I wasn't. At the time, I was still doing, uh, I was doing some other. Oh, shit. Navy shit. No, yeah, I was driving boats. Was so, it a cop or your BM? So, I joined the Navy on Des. Oh, okay, joined yeah. on Des. So then, he was unrated. Yeah, yeah. And then I ended up shifting over and, and then driving boats, and that's all I've been doing. So, um, I never really had the opportunity to do any 
cop shit. Like, yeah, right. like driving yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, you was out like, there re getting in the mud. Yeah, so we just driving. <laughs> People don't understand. People understand. Like, when you are designated in the Navy, oh. like, you go in there, you painting, you cleaning. You driving boats, you really getting it from the mud. So when people actually make it from undesignated, you really like you came out from somewhere. So I ended up going in there and I, again, unwritten rules. And now his man's jump out. And now I'm just like, yo, hold on, okay. I know I see the movement now. Hold on, let me go back to the fucking birds. And so I go back to over for like, yo, they was trying to jump me down the fucking P way. <laughs> I felt like I was back on the block, man. Like, hey man, they trying to get me down the block. So now they asked me like, "What did you do?" And it was like, I was like, "Yo, I just walked into Engineer Birds and tried to get the shit." And they was like, "Man, you fucking crazy! Like, you can't just go busting a shit." And I'm yeah. like, "For what? It's a, it's it ain't theirs. You know, it's a bird and it's a common. <laughs> nah, it, 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 it is. They, they it take is it theirs. It's theirs. Yeah, it's theirs. And, 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 and then I still didn't understand who does what on the ship too. So now I done got it into this beat. You're overflow, so you like you visiting, like you yeah, overflow. You don't got a home. Right. You don't got a home. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> So now, um, I didn't realize that they control a lot of the comfort things inside of the ship. Like hot water. Like hot water. <laughs> like water, nigga. Yeah, like, hey, like, hey, you talking about control shit. Motherfucker, they control the water. And then and then there's not the crew is not super big, so they know when you getting ready to go do something, everybody can hear it or, or see something. And uh, so what ended up happening, the next day, I went, I went to work, and I was underway on the boat, um, you know, doing the translating thing on the boat underway. And I get back, and, you know, it's hot as fuck in the Caribbean, dog. You know, you've been mm -hmm. you, you from Jamaica, so you understand. Oh, yeah, it's hot. It's, it's hot. super hot. So now I get back. I'm ready to be inside the ship skin because the AC is on the ship. It feels good. Now I walk to the overflow berth, and, and as soon as I get to the fucking P-way, to the, the door to the overflow, I just feel the heat coming from the birthing, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? It feel like outside, but on 10. Yeah, yeah, it's just right? super hot. So what ended up happening was um, I walked in, and there was no AC in my birthing. And everybody who was in there, they was fucking, they mad at me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, yo, I, I just got out from on the fucking boat. Like, what, what are you mad at me? And that's when I came to realize the motherfuckers that I got into beef with the day before, them fucking turned the AC off. So now everybody's suffering in the fucking brother where I'm at. Oh, yeah, everybody hot. Everybody sweating. Yeah, when I mean like hot. Hey, yeah, because when it's hot outside, it's hotter in the boat. Right. And especially if that burden is on, is touching the skin's shit. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, the, 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 the fucking the sun is oh, hitting you. Oh, my God. Metal on metal. Oh, my God, son. It was so fucking hot. I had to go sleep downstairs in the fucking bay in a chair. <laughs> And they wasn't playing. I thought it was like a little joke. Like, I, right, you motherfuckers. I get the point. Turn the AC back on. They were like, nah, the AC tagged out. Yeah. Can't. It's, it's tagged out till we say it's, it, it's going to come back up. The AC is out until it's I out. say it's ready. Until it's ready. I don't fuck with you, so it ain't going to be ready no time soon. And we got one AC and R tech on the fucking ship. And, uh, yeah, he's on. Uh, he's sleeping right now. Yeah. So now, so now everybody kind of, I peep game. And I was like, you know what? That's cool. I, I, you know, I, so now I went back and I thought about it in my head. I'm saying, I'm going to play this real smooth. I'm just going to go in there and apologize. But then really, I'm going to fuck one of these dudes up when we get out <laughs> into the town. Because I was like, yo. Hey, I, they I, fuck I, with your, they fuck with your livelihood. Yeah, they, yo, they, give you, they, they have power. So I ain't even been on the ship fucking a month yet. And I'm already getting into it. For no, it's because I didn't know the rules. But it's, you know what? But you gotta know now. You know oh. when you you a newbie, oh, yeah. they gonna fuck with you, and you ain't gonna have no power, and you gonna hate life. Yeah. And then guess what? You gonna talk to your supervisor about it, and be like, ah, right, that, that's just but that's the way it the is. But that's the part too. Is that's the other part is that's what they testing too, and some people don't understand that. It's like they testing to see what you gonna do afterwards. Are you gonna run back to <laughs> fucking? Are you gonna run back to the fucking? Are you, are you gonna feed, are, are you gonna meet him in the reefer? Are you nigga? gonna meet him at the reefer deck, and, <laughs> and we are gonna figure this out on the reefer deck? Yeah. And um, nah, man, I didn't go tell nobody about it. It was just like I, I was like, okay, cool. I could peep where maybe I might have been a little disrespectful. Cool, but I right, bitch, it's fucking 120 inside the burden right now, yeah. bro. I, I feel like I'm I, I'm about to get baked. Yeah. If, <laughs> and um, so yeah, now they ended up turning the AC back on. We ended up all being cool. And, um, but it was, I realized later on why they all like changed their mind because 
we were all getting ready to go into the Spanish countries, and there's only three of us that speak Spanish on the ship. Oh, and they had to be cool <laughs> with you because you had you we got to go fucking, on, on the plug. You the the floor. Floor. Look, you pulling the port. I need a Liberty buddy. I need a Liberty speak buddy. speak Spanish. I exactly. want some chica. I want some, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so these cats, yeah, exactly. So they wanted to make the moves. Now, at first, again, I didn't understand how much power I really had with that, which I really had a fucking. Because you're bilingual, that's power. It was the power, man. And um, it was even to the power. If you're on the, the West Coast, you ain't had no power. Oh, no, 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 no. But you're on the East Coast, you go to, and you're yeah. going South, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. the pool. And it was, yeah, it was, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, it was even to the point where um, I had the pool that the, that the supply officers used to call me to the pier, like, hey, man, can you figure out, we're trying to get the deal so we could get food on board, you know, to the galley and shit, yeah. you know, and um, for stores. And at, when I, once, it took me about a week and a half. After I realized it, I didn't pay for shit Ooh. when we went out. I was like, "Yeah, no, oh nah. y'all wanna, y'all wanna go out on Liberty, or oh, y'all y'all wanna so, pay f- full price, or y'all wanna pay the real price." So we gonna talk about that, right? We gonna talk about how like you had to pay, like we gonna talk about Jody stories, right? Oh, because man. look, we gonna, I want you, oh, I want you to talk about. Jody I know, story I'm pretty sure we got some Jodies on here right now. Somebody who was taking care of somebody's wife while we yeah. was gone. So we go Jody <laughs> or the dudes, like we said, the dudes who was taking care of the wife while dudes yeah. was under un, underway. I know I was out the way. I was on the way for a hundred days on the way. When you pull in the port, that man ain't had no money in his account. Oh no! Nah, that, that listen to me. That was so. Some of us, for what our jobs are, right, we have yeah. to be able to hold a clearance, you know. And the clearance is just like, you know, some people got a secret, top secret clearance. And part yeah. of being uh, holding the clearance is you got to have your financials together. Yeah. And what some of these chicks was doing back home, these dudes is underway. And sometimes we don't got no comms. But either we don't got no comms back home. Communication. Or yeah. we really just don't want to email back home. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, hey we working or we busy or we get back to the ship late from duty and we didn't want to sit in front of the computer. So these chicks or they wives or whoever, um, they pretty much taking care of the expenses. And <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so look, hey, if, if I ain't tell you once, I was smart about it. I don't know if you're smart. I was married twice while I was in the military. I always had my own personal bank account. I feed money to my, I feed money. You got to feed money to them. If you have a if you have an old head that will tell you you gotta feed money. You gotta feed the You beef. gotta feed money because guess what? You pull in the port. Hey, you got six months worth of paychecks you thought you had saved, and you go to ATM and ain't nothing there. You're right. When you don't manage your own money. But I mean, a lot of them cats, I mean, it wasn't the old it wasn't the salty motherfuckers. And and again, for the people that's on there, when I say salty, those are the people that's like, if you've been you know, like uh, you've been in Navy like 15 years or 20 <laughs> years or whatever. You've been on like five, yeah. six ships. You consider the salty motherfucker. Salty. I, yeah. say, I, I say 10 years of salty. What do you say salty is? How I many would, years do you say salty? I would say, I wouldn't say years. I would say, well, I would say years because it, it does affect it. But also within them years is what you've done too. Because like you can't be salty to me if you worked at uh, PSD for the last fucking Nine years. You can't work a PSD for nine years. You know what I mean? While you bullshitting, there's people that do. They oh, got, okay, yeah, okay, they do okay, that okay, shit, man. Okay. They, they go from PSD to PSD. So you say what, like two deployments in your belt or salty? At least two deployments. You gotta, ha- you can't just go one deployment. You know what I'm saying? Like, if anybody that's on, y- y- y'all tell me what y'all think about it right now. You know, how many how many years, how, ma- how many shifts? At least I'll, two. I would say okay. at least two. I would say semi, if you had semi two, 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 two deployments, I'll wipe the salt off you. You know what I'm saying? I say two if you don't got your ESWAS. You no, but it, it got some dirt bags. I ain't gonna say my homeboys, but some of y'all dirt bags don't want to <laughs> East Wash thin. I'm saying I was triple qual. I was double qual as a fucking E E three. That sound so, like the homeboy hookup to hey, me. No, <laughs> no, no. I was the first the East Wash I was done, but the, the EAWS. I brought a platter of food there, and they, you know what I'm saying the question was easy. I'm just I mean, saying, yeah. hey, the question was a little easier because I had a platter of food. It hey, was. But look, two deployments minimum. I would say, I would say minimum, yeah. After your second, maybe on that uh, shi- on know, that ship, on that ship. I, cause no, I'm no, t- no. You got the air crew guys that don't been some places. Uh, yeah, and they goofies, they clowns. Uh, they come to the ship and they like, <laughs> you know, like. I had a green suit on. I, I did some air crew shit. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, goofies, man. They're like, man, you go that way. <laughs> you go that way. All right. Bro. Okay, okay. Yeah. I and guess I, they. Now I see and understand. Now I have done it for a little while. They see the struggle. You know what? Air crew, 
I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, they not when doing stores crew, on load. They not doing fucking uh, the unreps on load. No, they not. And you got crew rest. Yeah. When I got there, I was like, hold up. You mean to tell me nobody could bother me 15 hours before I fly? Yep. You can't call my phone or nothing? Mm-hmm. But hell yeah. Yeah. And that crew rest shit. And we like, hey, man, save the wax beans for those motherfuckers <laughs> when they come to eat, all right? Before yeah. <laughs> but that's say So... Th- Hey, I just want to welcome everybody to a legendary talk. This is Garage Talk, Sea Stories Edition. All of us Navy veterans, active duty, been around the world. I'm here just to share the platform of what we've been through, all the good times, the bad times, and the reminiscing. If you ever go to a bar or see some sales out there talking plain spades, this is what we talk about. Only the real can recognize the real.